Well, hello there, folks. How's it going today? I hope everybody's doing really good. Uh, today, we're going to take a look at this uh, classical guitar. This one belongs to me. This is a Penco uh, classical. Made around 1970. It has the misspelled label. It has one N. It should have two. Uh, you can see it's a really low serial number, too. And what they did is they went ahead and uh, put the misprinted labels on the first batch that they sold. So this is one of them. Now, I did a video on this a week or so ago where I uh, pumped some fish glue into some of these little cracks in the top. And that took care of that quite nice. Now, I was getting ready to string the guitar up. And I noticed this. When I looked at the fretboard... I don't know if you guys can kind of get the same feeling. It looked like it was copped. And I've seen this happen on classicals before. You know, the fretboard's quite wide, so it's more prone to cupping. Now, when I looked at it, I uh, again, I thought it had copped. But it's also lifting the uh, frets up. I can stick a piece of paper under every one of these, okay? You know, it's hard to do on camera, but... So, it it is copped, though, and I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm going to grab a fret rocker, okay? Now, I can still slide a piece of paper under the uh, center of that. You can even see the gap, okay? So, uh, when the fretboard copped, it actually popped the ends of the frets up. Now, I tried to pound them back down. And uh, just kind of see seesaws them, a teeter totters. You pound this end down, this one comes up. So uh, I think what we're going to have to do to actually fix this is pull the fret wire out and uh, you know flatten this fretboard back out and take the uh, cup out of it. We're going to have to take some off each side to do it. There's really no way around it. Uh, you can really feel it when you're holding the guitar, and even when you run your hand across the fret wire, it feels like a big, a big gully right in the middle. It's really bizarre feeling, uh, and you know that's not that's not uh, good for the playing action or anything like that either. It just feels weird to play. So we're gonna tackle that. And the other thing we're gonna tackle is this. Uh, this is just a piece of paper off a string package, okay? It's really thin. It's thinner than regular paper, so I usually use this, but as you guys can see, uh, you can stick that paper in there quite a ways. I'm going to fold it in half just to make it easier for me, and it will be a little more rigid. There you go. So even folded in half, uh, you can see that the uh, bridge has lifted, so... We got to fix that too. So we got to pop the bridge off it and uh, re glue it. And we're going to pull the fret wire out of it. And we're going to plane this fretboard back down so it's flat and uh, go from there. We'll check the uh, if there is any radius at all, which I don't think there is. A lot of classicals are like that, they're just flat. So what I've done is I've taken my razor knife and I turned it around backwards and just scribed a line around it all the way around it so I have a uh, reference to put it back on. You know, we want it right back where it was. The guitar was intonated quite well. Uh, something I checked previous, you know, before we got going. Uh, so anyway, that's what the plan is for this one. And uh, I think we're going to start with the uh, fret wire first. We'll pull those all out, and, uh, you know, I may leave these or something. That's not a big deal. I'd rather not pound these back in, but it's okay. If you have to, you can put a block under there and do it. Uh, so in any case, you know, the frets aren't worn or anything. It's just, you know, it's the only way I can get at the actual fretboard to uh, plane it down and uh, make it right again. So it so it's not concaved, and you know the frets aren't going to stay in there. Even if I pull them out and put new frets in with it concaved, it's just going to dent the fret, so to speak. So 
Okay, so let's get set up. We'll spin the guitar around. We'll get the soldering iron out and uh, get ready to pull these frets out. Okay, folks, so I got an older soldering iron here that I've devoted just to this, okay? And I got a notch ground into it, so it will stay on the uh, fret wire nice for me. And it won't keep, you know, falling off and, and uh, burning the fretboard up. If you have a fretboard that has uh, fret markers in it or blocks or parallelograms, those can burn really easy. You just touch that with a solder and iron and it's usually the end of it. So this is kind of a good way to do it. At least, you know, buy a cheap solder and iron to take one tip and uh, grind a notch in it. Okay, so we got that good and hot. I gotta find a place to uh, set my solder and iron on. Uh, let's see, let's just use that right there. Okay, so what we're gonna do is uh, come in here with our pliers and just try to get something started if we can. These are really, really low frets, so these aren't going to be easy uh, by any means. Okay, so we got it started, and I'm just going to work my way across this as best I can. Just take a little bite each time, and there you go. Uh, now, I always check to see if the fret's still warm, too when I pull them out because uh, that can tell you if you're not holding it on there long enough or too long and uh, you know they should feel just you know kind of lukewarm when you get them out uh, a lot of the heat's going to dissipate into your pliers as you touch them with pliers anyway but that one was just kind of lukewarm uh, but it come out pretty easy. These are really narrow and uh, kind of low frets, which is what I'm going to put back in it. Uh, that's what these are about. You don't want them too tall with a classical because the strings are a lot softer and you're more apt to uh, push the string down all the way to the fretboard and pull it out of pitch. So I really think that uh, lower frets are the way to go on a classical. Just my opinion. Okay, again, we're just trying to get a bite on this thing wherever we can, which is really hard to do. I may have to come in from this end uh, to do it right. It's really hard to do on camera, but we'll do our best. Okay, I got to reposition. Okay, so I just had to get my hand right in front of the camera to get it started. That's just, you know, luck of the draw how it works. But, uh, you know, basically once I get that, get that end started, I can just walk right across it and just let the pliers do their work. So these were glued in previously too. I can see... Uh, you know, residual glue, that white stuff that you see along each side of the uh, fret slot. So they uh, were glued in. But again, when the fretboard copped, uh, it pushed the ends of the fret wire up and they just kind of went with it and it even popped some of them loose. So, uh, you know, Again, it's just the nature of them. Some of them do it. This obviously got dry uh, probably more than once in its life. That has a lot to do with it. Well, let's see if I can get this started right in front of you. Um, not quite. I just got to get my pliers kind of under it. Really hard to do with a, uh, you know, keep it in frame. But like I said, I'm just taking my time trying to let you guys see how this works uh, in real time and get a nice close-up view of it. 
Okay, so that one's out. Doing good. No chip out to speak of at all. And, uh, you know, another thing you can do is this. You can take a, a razor and score along each side of the fret wire before you uh, remove it. And, you know, sometimes you don't have to. In this case, I'm, I'm good to go just like it is. So, but, uh, you know, on an older, older fretboard, ebony chips pretty easy. So, if this was ebony, then I probably would have scored them. Uh, but you can try one, you know, just try one fret, see what it does. If it chips any out, then, you know, scribe along the sides with a razor knife. And heat, heating them up does help. It really does. You got to remember if that glue's hooked to that fretboard and you don't heat it up, you can still get the fret out, but it's it's going to remove part of the fretboard with it because the glue's still hooked to it and it's hooked to the, uh, the fret wire. So, again, it's good to heat them up. And, you know, if you want to score along the edge, there's nothing wrong with that at all. All right, boy, these are really hard to get a hold of. I think I got that one possibly started. Yep, we did. Okay, so. Again, just go along, let your uh, fret plies do the work for you. I made these myself. Uh, you know, they were like wire cutters of some sort, or horseshoe pliers, I don't really know, but I uh, scalloped the ends out, you can see that I've bent them again, I'm going to have to straighten them back out here very soon, but uh, until then, we should be good, okay, so, but they work good, you can buy them too, uh, you know, Stu Max sells them, eBay, Amazon, well, you can make your own, uh, like I did. I I was going to buy a nice set of uh, pliers, you know, removal pliers for just for this, but uh, these work good for me, and I really don't see the need to change, so I'm just going to keep using them. All right, get that one good and hot. Let that glue kind of... Release a little bit. And like I said, I'm going to just try to sneak in over the camera here. And get this one going. Okay, we got it started, so. I'm just going to sneak our way across here. All right. That wasn't really how I intended it to come out, but it come right out nice. And again, no uh, no chip out. That's good. That makes the uh, job a lot easier. That's really time consuming, having to fill all those chips back in with super glue and wood dust and, you know, razor blade that all off and finish it. And It's tedious. It takes a long time. You know, it's got to be done, though. You don't you don't want to leave any bad-looking work behind. At least I don't. Uh, if you're going to do this stuff, especially, you know, even for yourself, take pains in what you're doing. Do a good job. And uh, especially if you're doing it for somebody else. Uh, if this was someone else's guitar, I probably would have taped the fretboard off and... You know, it took a couple extra steps, but where it's mine, it's not really a big deal. Uh, so, again, I got to stick my hand in the way just for a second. Okay, sorry about that, folks. Uh, it's just what it is. I have to really uh, try to get right on the very edge to lift that up and get it started now. This isn't really great fret wire either. The uh, barbs are pretty much non-existent, and there's not a lot of them. So it's probably kind of cheap fret wire to begin with. Uh, but in any case, we're going to put some new back in. 
All right, let's go after this one. The old soldering iron right in there and walk the heat right to it. And uh, hopefully some of these start to get easier for me uh, as far as getting them started. This is where a lot of the trouble starts down here where the frets have lifted and, and whatnot. So, uh, again, it wasn't a great fret job to begin with. You can see a uh, fret slot out on the uh, end of the frets if you look close here. Not great. So I did just nick the fretboard with my iron. That's why I'm saying put a notch in it uh, so that don't happen. And, uh, you know, don't do it on camera. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, sorry about that, folks. Let me get this thing straight. Okay. I know, I'm not much of a, of a cameraman, am I, folks? Well, I didn't claim to be. Uh, <laughs> I can fix guitars, I just can't film. All right, let's keep going. I can fix that little nick in the fretboard, too. You'll never even know it was there. Uh, but, you know, like I said, taping it off isn't a bad piece of business, either. Takes... A little time that's all I do this enough where uh, you know usually I don't slip especially if I'm if I'm f not filming it then I'm good to go I don't have to worry about any of that stuff so uh, but doing it on film I'm looking through the cameras I'm doing it sometimes and you know it's easily to get easy to get distracted okay that should be hot enough uh, you to set the uh, iron on something other than that piece of paper. Ah, uh, there we go. All right. I want to set the place on fire, guys. All right, let's see if we can get this one started. Again, you really have to get right out on the edge of these. They're just so, they're so low that, okay, we got it started. They're just so low, it's just hard to grab them, honestly, with any, any pliers. So, but with a little patience, we can get them out. Okay, folks, so I went ahead and pulled the rest out. I left the last two. I may end up taking those out as well, but as you can see, they come out really nice. No chips, anything like that. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to try to get this bridge off here next. Okay, let's get to it. All right, folks, so what we got going here, I've got a... Uh, an old uh, scraper that I thinned right down. It's not sharp on the end, it's thin. I mean, it'll cut you, definitely. It's thin enough to uh, do that, but it's not like a razor or anything, but it is thin down. And uh, what I'm doing is just heating that up. I've got a piece of plastic here, so I don't burn the uh, guitar top. And what I'm doing is just trying to loosen some of this glue up as best I can. You can hear it kind of snap. When you hear that little snapping, that's when you got to stop. Now I'm going to heat that up some more and uh, get that plastic off there. Now you can heat the uh, bridge up itself too with like those silicone uh, heat blankets. You know, they use them for snowmobiles to heat the engines up. Uh, you just plug them in. And it just makes the sled stat easier and all that. So, uh, but I like this method. It seems to work good for me. Again, this kind of melts the glue and uh, it kind of speeds things up, I think, for me. Uh, again, you know, everybody has a different method on how they do this stuff. And, uh, Again, when you hear a crack like that, 
it's time to start reheat your tool up and uh don't be in a hurry you got to take your time with this if you don't you uh you're gonna dig into the top or you're gonna just crack it and break something and it really is a game of patience doing this and you know technique and and all that come into play as well uh you know after you do it a few times you kind of learn the uh, tricks on what to do and what not to do so again i'm just going to let that hot knife just kind of melt through that glue for me and let that do the work i'm not really pushing too hard uh, just enough to kind of loosen things up that's weird looks like a piece of uh trash bag just come out of the uh from, from under the bridge it wouldn't surprise me if there was actually plastic in there who knows my guess is they uh probably glued the bridge on to the uh, lacquer that happened a lot they would lacquer the guitar spray it all down glue the bridge on it and uh not good i know a lot of guitars uh that have come in with the bridges left and that's the case uh I just did an Alvarez not long ago, probably from the uh, 90s, I'm going to say. Same thing. Uh, or they would actually scratch some of the finish off, but not all the way out to the edges. Uh, just made no sense. I guess it must have sped things up, getting guitars out of the factory or something. I don't know. Whoop, sorry, folks. Okay, boys, I'm having a bad camera day today, guys. Well, just bear with me. All right, that sounded good or bad, whichever way you want to look at it. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's getting hot enough now. I can feel it uh, going in past the glue. It's kind of just breezing right through it now for me. Uh, you don't want to push this all the way through. That's another thing I wanted to uh, add to this. Uh, as this gets going, you really have to be careful. And that's where this line comes in that you scribe with your razor blade. As I told you before, you definitely want to scratch a line all the way around here. For one, you'll know where the bridge goes and you'll know how far to scrape back. And you need to get this on right. If not, the intonation's going to be wonky on it. So. You know, again, take your time, mark everything out before you remove anything, and you should be good to go. Now, you're going to hear some little snaps and crackles, and it happens, guys. Uh, it's part of it. Even if you heat them up with an eye, and it does the same thing. Uh, they don't just fall off, I can tell you that. I don't care how you do it. Okay. That was a good one. We're getting there. I'm going to heat that back up one more time. Uh, we know that's loose up on the end because I can move it. So we've cut through the glue. That's great. Uh, hopefully the uh, rest of the result is the same. And uh, we're going to find out here in just a second what's going on as far as, uh, you know, lacquer under the bridge. Or did they glue it right to the wood? Uh... I don't know. My guess is they glued it to the lacquer. We'll see. Uh, hopefully we're going to find out right now. Okay, so again, I'm just trying to work my way through that glue. Really not using a ton of pressure here. I'm just trying to really just get the glue separated uh, from the wood. Okay, I think we're making some pretty good headway now. Um, all right, I think we got it loose across the back here. Yeah, I come right through. Okay, again, uh, I think I'm going to try to, uh, scribe a line on there a little better right now, just to make sure that we're not going to peel anything up. Okay, so when you do do this, you know, you... You want to go on an angle, really use a light touch, okay? 
and don't cut through the top. Don't try to push your pressure down on the top. You want to be pushing it at an angle into that, that 90 degree joint on the front of the bridge, okay? All right, we're going to go for the gusto here this time. I think we should be able to get it. Uh, I'm going to probably come in from this side now and see if I can get that started. Which I think it's still kind of hooked here in the front. It doesn't want to stack, so let's get back to the back here a little bit more. Just see if I can loosen that glue up all the way to the front. Uh, okay, again, I'm going to just be safe. I'm going to uh, cut a little more pronounced line in there because I think it is glued to the lacquer. Yeah, I can kind of see it's hooked in the front. So, what we want to do is come in from this side and that's going to push the bridge you know it's going to separate it from the lacquer this way instead of it pulling this way and peeling the lacquer okay now that's something sometimes you may learn the hard way <laughs> you never know so I can still feel it hooked a little on the end here and uh, we're almost there okay let's see what it looks like well, I don't think they did, they did uh, glue it to the lacquer. I can see the lacquer, okay? And it did leave some on the back here, which is okay. We'll clean this up. Same with this. And uh, what we'll do is just scratch the lacquer off out to the uh, outside edges of the line. And we'll be good to go. So we've got a line, like I said, established. And, you know, again, like I said, this happens all the time on uh, guitars. They'll spray the uh, body and then glue the bridge to the lacquer. Well, you, we all know that lacquer checks over time, right? So, uh, you know, that's what happens. So that's my little method on, uh, you know, removing bridges. I have done it, you know, with an iron. It works well, too. I find this works good for me most of the time, not always, but, uh, you know, in, in any case, sometimes it's inevitable. You just can't separate the uh, glue from the wood and the, and the lacquer is involved with it too. So uh, that lacquer is stuck to the bottom of this bridge. Sometimes you can't unhook the lacquer. It's different than glue. So even heating it up won't work sometimes. So anyway, you know, to each his own. Like I said, I use different methods. A uh, heat blanket or an iron does work well uh, most of the time. So, you know, sometimes I just prefer to do it this way and heat up my, uh, you know, uh, palette knife here and just do it that way. Well, all right, folks, uh, there'll be a part two on this one. The next thing I'm going to do now is probably, more than likely, uh, level this up, take the uh, cuff out of it, and of course I need to light sand it to get you know this stuff knocked down on each side of the uh, fret slot here. But you know, in any case, it is going to. I had to pull the frets out. It's the only way I could do it because I don't want this copped when I put new frets in, it's just going to make it worse in the end. Uh, so this way, what I'll do, I'll get it flattened back out and I'll glue the frets in every one of them. And that will kind of hold it better too. Uh, you know, it needs some structural support there. So in any case, you can see they did glue some of them. Uh, some of them aren't glued though. There's no glue in there. That's where the worst cupping seemed to be. And it seems like they did glue a few down here and that was it. Or maybe somebody did at some point in the uh, guitar's history. So there you have it, folks. We're going to uh, get this one back up and running in any case. 
it is a nice guitar it's made of real wood and it sounds really really sweet so uh, I'm gonna take the uh, time to fix it up right it's definitely a guitar that I'm gonna hang on to and uh, you know it's 54 years old it's in pretty sweet shape for what it is okay folks well uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, welcome to all the new subscribers uh, we will do a part two on this when I get the uh, materials in. I got to get some fret wire ordered next and uh, some classical strings. So stay tuned for this one and uh, I'll do definitely do a sound demo of it when I get it all completed and uh, shoot some more video along the way of you know what I'm going to do to repair it. I'll even shoot video of the uh, you know squaring this up, how I do that and reattaching the bridge. Uh, I got a few little little things that I like to try, uh, you know, gluing those back on. A few different methods I use. I'm not sure which one is going to be good for this one, but we'll figure it out. Okay, folks, we'll see you guys real soon. Be good. Okie doke.